Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and everybody watching us live <laughs> on Twitch. How's it going? It's the middle of the week. A couple <laughs> of days left. We're halfway through it. Not too much crazy left to hit us. But we got some crazy to talk about. We, we got the end results of some crazy to talk about. Yeah. But first, I want to share a little bit of a uh, story. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do a after shows in, on Saturday night. We do Linux Gamecast Weekly. We've been doing it for a decade. And we do after shows in, because I always thought it's, it's good to bring the community in. So if you're you know Twitch sub or a patron, you can come on the show, live stream, hang out. But then we do like the after after shows. And when we close down the uh, Twitch stream, we still hang out in Discord because we're talking. We're having a good time. We were looking for PC cases. We were. Digging around. I was anyway. So, you know, as soon as you start doing it, everybody else starts doing something. And like a cheap one. Like super cheap. <laughs> Crazy cheap. It was a cardboard pizza box. If you haven't built a pizza box PC, you live a better life because I've done that. I've, <laughs> I've yes. used cardboard. I've used milk crates. Just whatever. I've used wood. <laughs> would it work? Would yeah. it work? I'm not quite that fancy. Um, just a little test bench something because i have that uh the original jackbox motherboard with the pci pci not pci express but pci slot on it and there's still a couple of pci audio cards uh, especially it's like from echo that i want to test at some point just for interfacing linux like what do i do with that board and i mm. it's like i want the most basic case where did we end up test bench because we started looking for like little and it's a full-size atx board too that kind of threw and i was like i don't want a case that's going to slice my wrist into and all that yeah <laughs> so instead of doing that we started looking at uh test bench and jill you have a test bench for everyone to see don't you yeah i sure do jill has one of the ones that we looked at yeah this is an an open air uh micro atx and mini itx test bench and I liked it because it was simple. I have a, a nicer quality one that has a power supply holder and everything. Mm -hmm. But this one is nice for it works. Just quick builds and it, yeah. and it works. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with those at all. Um, mm -hmm. They're about like 20 bucks, right? Yeah, $23 for <laughs> every size. <laughs> $23. See, I'm not going to be bothered with such cheap peasantry. No, 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 no. I found one that's $24, Jill. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Look at this nonsense. Uh, great. Yeah, we, we just found this on Amazon. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these up because it, look at this. It comes with, ah, come on. Amazon, <laughs> quit doing this. It comes with power cable. That's what sold us uh, Saturday when we were talking about that. I'm like, oh, mm, has the power cable. <laughs> the power button so I don't have to, uh, you know, nice. stick a screwdriver in there. Screwdriver. Light it up yeah. Every single day. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. We'll do a um, live stream build of that. Just to see how a twenty-four dollar test bench works. I'm at worst case scenario, it'll be a funny video. Best case scenario, I'll have some to put that motherboard in. Yeah, to test those cards. Well, that'll be awesome. I'll pick up one too, <laughs> and we can compare notes. It'll be in, I, uh, <laughs> now for me personally. I like uh, I I like to build um, horizontally, not vertically, um, and that's one of the reasons why I, I usually use the 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 test benches that are laid down vertically. So like personally, I like to build yeah. inversely, you know, yeah. down. <laughs> I really feel but, that, you know, fits me as a person. But that's perfect then. Cause that is closer to, you know, the, the verticality of a case. <laughs> so, which is what you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's flat. It doesn't yeah. stand on its side. It's just yeah. a flat yeah. test bench with the back on it. Mm -hmm. That's it's, true. <laughs> it's 24 bucks. It's got a power cord. It's, Probably, I'm sure the manufacturing tol tolerances are going to be a lot of whack, so I'm going to have to like force the standoffs in there. But um, yeah, I I'll get that and then, like a stick around. We were joking about putting because um, it's at. Uh, I think I can use the uh, Ryzen 1700 that I got. Mm -hmm. That was originally Jackbox because it originally worked with that board. All we need, which is a 65 watt TDP chip, but like, yeah, would be fun to put in there because it's got a spot for power supply. It's like a 1700 watt power supply. Just make yeah, there the you go. Just make the internet <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> just play it off and like we bought this just for this build to make sure it has enough power with one stick of RAM in it. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about. Um, <laughs> 
something we mentioned last week because it happened like that morning, right? Yeah, it sure did. And so we were just trying to digest it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What went down is uh, Red Hat altered the deal just a little bit. And they're like, hey, you got a system there. Let's, let's just throw a uh, wrench into it. And what do we mean by that? Basically, Red Hat, not basically, very real, really, is basically Red Hat's only going to be releasing the uh, source code for RHEL RPMs behind their customer portal. They're going to change that. A lot of people learned last week that the GPL allows for that. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That's illegal. I'm like, not really. That's yeah. <laughs> not in the spirit of the GPL. I'm like, I would agree with that. And, um, you know, with the CentOS switch, we saw a new thing show up. We had Rocky, mm -hmm. which is going to maintain that tradition. And we had Alma, or Alma. Jordan pronounced it like some stranger way than that, too. Oh, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the the developers do pronounce it Alma. <laughs> it, it wasn't Alma or Alma. Jordan, you got a better pronunciation of it. I was like, what are you talking? I was like, oh, that's what you're trying to say. But maybe I am I'm always on that, you know, because anytime you like you have like a weird project name and you go and yeah. ask the developer, you're like, so how do you pronounce it? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> However you want. Like, exactly. So we got a response from the team over at Rocky. Like, what's going on? What's their path forward? And, you know, Rocky, they're really confident that they're going to be able to continue providing, like, the bug for bug compatible bits for Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL, despite the changes in accessibility. You know, they say that they've come up with a way that's going to abide by the licensing agreement, but it's also going to be a lot of manual work on their end. And um, then I went and checked uh, Alma, right? Alma, Alamama. Linux. And they guess it's the same thing. Like, hey, things have changed. What are we going to do? Well, you know, we plan to move forward. We don't really have a roadmap in place planning exactly what we need to get done. But that's kind of where we're at right now. Like, we plan on working through this, both Rocky and Alma. Jill, you got some thoughts on this moving forward, though, right? Yeah, I absolutely do. When I, you know, after it, it was announced Wednesday and I was kind of doing the research and, and doing a lot of reading on it, um, I actually realized something that SUSE does subscriptions behind a customer portal too, and Ubuntu Pro sources are not available to non-pro customers. So in one way, Red Hat is just playing catch up, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so I I was you know just yeah re realizing that that you know they they have to put food on the table for their families as well <laughs> and this does help them a lot <laughs> yeah even though it's going to affect you know Alma and Rocky it's uh it's understandable that they're they're doing this the I mean the counter argument to that is like there was a reason that. CentOS and Lady, and then we saw Rocky and Alma have such a larger share of the market than, say, Suzy or Ubuntu Server. It's because mm -hmm. they weren't doing that. It's when people were like, hey, this is, we like this system. Now, let me be very clear. Am I happy with this move? Nope. Not at all. I'm not. Do I get it? Also, I get it. I'm capable of having two opposing thoughts in my brain mates at one time. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, well, I understand. Will they find a way to work around it? Probably. And you're thinking about like the Red Hat developer subscription. Like for individuals, Red Hat has come up because there was this blog, I'm going to, written by Mike McGrath. And this is a lot of words saying, yeah, we, we just, we, we're doing this. That, that's what this blog says. Is a lot of words saying, this, this is a brave new world. Deal with it, you know, politely. And, okay, I'm not tied into the Red Hat ecosystem. I've been offered on multiple occasions by multiple Red Hat employees. Like, hey, do you want a RHEL license to, like, enterprise license to go play around with? And like, mm. even for the studio stuff. To answer your question, Joe, I saw that go by in mm. the chat just a minute ago. I'm like, yeah, because I, what was I doing? I was putting, you know, this is back when CentOS was before CentOS streams. I was on there, and I'm like, I don't really want to get tied into that ecosystem. 
maybe some other people now are going to go, maybe I don't want to get tied into that ecosystem. Or like, maybe I shouldn't have gotten tied into that ecosystem. <laughs> and um, where do you go from this? Where do I want to see things happen? I want the Debian project to do a lot of work because some Yahoo named Vin Stone on the internet's like, please do this. How about a Debian LTS? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, it is LTS, really. <laughs> I mean, just by the sake of how long they take until the next version. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, really, where do you go with this? Like, if you're doing a set and you move it over to Rocky, you moved over to Alma, you're, you're just kind of in a holding pattern right now. Like, but with Rocky, you should be good because they're able to get the updates pushed out right now, but it's still kind of shaky. And mm -hmm. what this is not going to do, this is not going to get individuals to transfer over to Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, and personal subscriptions and all that. that that's not going to happen. But I don't think IBM or Red Hat believes that's going to be the case. I don't, uh, the ultimate goal here, I don't know. I don't see how this... That, that's my question. I'd love to get answered better. Where in the business model does this make money for Red Hat? Because the jumping ship are going to the official version you know people traditionally running CentOS or organizations mm -hmm. I should say running CentOS at least in my experience um, and I know that from you know EDU uh, I look at like the budgets they have and Dr. John's explained this to me and he's like we don't have the budget we can't afford RHEL he's like this is why we run Cent he still doesn't have the budget to run RHEL so he's gotta okay. find something mm -hmm. else you know it's not like yeah. He, he's been holding back the money. He's like, I, I don't have the budget. They don't give me enough money to do this. He's like, I can buy, you know, 12 Windows licenses for whatever. And so, yeah. Let's just all install Arch and live a wild yeah. and <laughs> wacky life. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, gosh, I will, you know, I, once upon a time, I used to deploy a lot of Red Hat licenses on animation systems at our community college. So I was very involved with Red Hat at that time, and I'm, I'm glad I don't have to deal with, with this current change now, but it's okay. <laughs> it, it, peop, uh, you know, the uh, open source community is very active, and, and the penguins keep marching on, and things will uh, all come together. It'll work out. That's the yeah. beautiful thing about Linux is... is mm -hmm. My only takeaway from it is I don't think this is going to work out the way. Um, now, see, this is why I brought mm -hmm. up Oracle last week because that's the only play yeah, where I could see people like point. built yeah. into Oracle. They're like, oh, we got to do something and we've been paying Oracle. Now we might want to have to look at mm -hmm. moving because never underestimate the power of an Oracle sales weasel. They will get you tied into a full Oracle yeah. stack. <laughs> but then again, who knows? Who knows? It's going to work out in the end. Such is the power of open source. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of open source. Yeah. Linus Torvald just announced the release of Linux kernel 6.4 on Sunday. Sunday is the day that he does his kernel announcements. And there are lots of updates and hardware enhancements for AMD and Intel CPUs, GPUs, and ARM SOCs in, in this latest Linux kernel 6.4 release. There's initial support for Apple M2 SOC, which is used in the current MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini systems. You know, this still still is experimental, but the fact that it's now in the kernel is is very very cool, and uh, they've really uh, cleaned up a lot of the the work on Apple M1 as well. And there's also Wi-Fi support now for Apple M1 Pro and Max devices, which is really awesome to have that in the kernel. And one of the big things me and Ven were talking about early is AMD's P-State driver extension has guided autonomous mode and has been submitted to the Linux 6.4 kernel, which will actually improve performance and power efficiency for AMD Ryzen and Epic servers. So that's the a good all around. latest gen versions, let's be very clear on that. So if you're mm -hmm. running like some antique Threadripper like I am, like, no, you're not going to see the benefits oh, from yeah, it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So <laughs> that's great, man. Uh, your cores can power yeah. down at the wrong times even faster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
And there's something else I was really excited about, Vin, in this uh, release. There's a new, pow new power features for the Steam Deck via the updated AMD GPU kernel driver. Woohoo! And there's new Wi-Fi drivers for lots of real tech devices, some of them of, of which you may have in your computers. And I had a few of these, these uh, version numbers in my computers as, as well, including the RTL 8710BU. And uh, it's, it's nice to get more support on the real tech side because it used to always be hit and miss with their Wi-Fi drivers. And there's support also for the Logitech G9. 935 wireless 7.1 surround sound gaming headphones, which I actually use and love. I love that those headphones. So I'm really happy to get, get support for the 7.1 because up until now, you could get 3.1, not 7.1. And there's also Rumble support for the latest Xbox controllers. There's support for the Lenovo Yoga Book X90F 2 in 1 tablet and new drivers for the ROG Strix Z390F gaming motherboard. I have that motherboard, so I was really happy about that too as well. And, you know, check out the show notes for all the info. There's so many new hardware, you know, so much more hardware support and advancement in this kernel. It was really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think like one of the big things in this release uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of a lot of people in our audience is the power work that's been gone mm -hmm. into the Van Gogh APUs. That's going to be yeah. your Steam Deck, Steam OS. What's that going to do? Oh, I don't know. It's going to do magical things. Maybe not quite magical, but it will be able to intelligently manage thermals on your APU. Yeah. Maybe we'll get more than two hours of battery life when playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. See, <laughs> I I play on my TurboGrafx-16 oh. emulator on the Steam Deck and pretend it was my TurboGrafx-16 portable. Yeah. <laughs> so when it dies in two hours, I'm like, yeah, it's normal. Yeah. No, but they've really come a long way. I've noticed, you know, a better uh, uh, battery life uh, since I started using the Steam Deck when it came out. So it's yeah. every update they keep improving it. And it's really an amazing device. It is. It's, it's always one of my good main to get computers. That just gets better and better and better and better and better until the yeah. next thing. You know, it's like buying an AMD GPU, right? <laughs> it's yeah. Get better and better and better. Yes, or an Intel absolutely. Now. Intel yeah, Arc. Intel, Intel Arc, you go. <laughs> I saw that Intel's throwing down. Uh, they added ray tracing support and uh, yeah, for Blender and yeah. I saw that and I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, fine. Let me click on this. Shroud <laughs> posted it uh, earlier today, and uh, you know, I did Control Aft L. I getting getting my disappointment organ ready to. And in and, and boom, and a button was like, Oh, they're making sure day one is available for uh, Linux and Windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good job, Intel, or Intel does good, good job. Yes, now, you might not know this, but I like audio interfaces that work on Linux. Yay, I'm a big fan of it. And the internet would have you believe audio doesn't work under Linux, but we know better. People who listen to the show know better because I won't shut up about it. That's why. One of the interfaces that I've been very interested in, because I'm also a huge fan of reverse engineering, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of interfaces, <laughs> audio interfaces, are just USB compliant. They ish. Now, it's Linux. We just plug them in and they work. They don't have to do anything crazy. Every now and then we get something interesting like that Tascam 1608, which had a built in mixer, you know, digital mixer that we could access under Linux. And that's always fascinating. Then you run into things like, um, you know, like special effects where you want to like load sound clips and stuff like those things. You just like, well, you, we know that's not going to work. We're not going to mess around with it until somebody gets one or the right people get something and they go, I'm going to make this work. Mm -hmm. And while I'm not terribly excited about the Go XLR, some people are. And it has become the, the new YouTuber special, I'm going to say. It has. Yeah. That, that's, what, that's what all the kids. And coming for our video viewers, maybe I can pull this thing up. There it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's got four faders, I assume. They they look like Behringer faders because it's got Midas preamps. I'm sure those are Behringer faders. And uh, But it, it does like voice change. What what does it do? Megaphone, robot. It's got the bleep <laughs> button. It's got the swear button, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's got a couple sure effects. Does. And uh, I think it's got a clip launcher and some mutes. Well, 
none of that works out of the box under Linux because it's all proprietary stuff. Uh, so this is where the reverse engineering comes in. And there's a fantastic project that I've been following. I brought it up on the show a couple of times, the GoXLR on Linux, which they also, they even have a utility and there's a new version out and I'm very excited to talk about it. Also, I'm not very excited at the 399. That's why we don't have one yet, man. That's, that's too rich. But what's new in this? A couple of big things, man. A couple of big things. Now, let me be clear. The GoXLR app, this is a replacement, not just for Linux, but Windows and Mac OS. They're, they're doing the whole gamut. And it lets you configure this little TC Helion on Linux. And this latest release, dude, we get an EQ fine tune. That's now up in the UI. UI has basic visualization of the device, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Option to allow remote mm -hmm. network access through the user interface, better sample handling, and this is the largest change to date, just period. The amount of stuff that they've thrown in. Now they've done it for a reason, though, because they're getting ready for that big 1.0 release. Nice. It's where you just kind of dump everything out there. And this is a pre release. So you, you might see some bugs. You might see some bugs, Joe. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought it was cool that they added an option to allow remote network access to the daemon via system settings. That That's huge. Mm. Yeah, I, network <laughs> access is always a good thing. <laughs> And it's got can RGBs you SSH in it. In it? Like you, you, you can make it blink and you can get angry at it. It's yeah. Just, it's just like it's 400 bucks and I can't. Oh, it is. Yeah. If I pricey. was going to use it, yeah. I mean, $400 is like, here's, let's do a video on it and I'll show you how to get it set up. Go XLR if you're listening. Send me one and I'll do that. Jill, you noticed something in the um, change along. Yes, I did. So they thanked uh, Linux Gamecast. They gave us a, a shout out and thank you, devs. Well, they're, they're happy that there's a thumbnail. <laughs> you brought it to their attention that they needed a thumbnail for their application. <laughs> I brought the, here's, well, here's what I see. Um, so as is tradition with so many projects, there's no screenshots. Yeah. Is what my quote was right here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on March 2023. So you have one now. Thank yeah. Thank you very much. And this always, this winds me up. I do this on this show and I do it on Wednesdays. Not to be mean, but as a reminder, especially if you have a GUI application like this one, yeah, people are like, okay, maybe maybe I want to set this up, maybe I want to play with it. What people don't want to do is head over. Look at this! Hey, I got to show off the screenshots. I mean, I am not, yep, there it is. <laughs> look at it. You got to your consoles, your voice chats, your outputs. I want to play with one. If I find one used, I'll pick one up, and so we can have some fun with it get a swear button um yeah. which is easy enough to like set up huge fan of it uh but back to that like if you have a gui you're working on the gui application put some screenshots on your github page yeah or your you know whatever <laughs> you're using the host your code because that's what people want to be able to see something before they download it and build it and install it like hey what's this thing look like and i knew yeah. this thing looked good because guess what i downloaded it compiled it installed it which i didn't have i just want to see what the gui looked like and uh yeah that's nice huge fan of what they're doing reverse engineering makes me happy this is why to this day all the stuff with the motu series the motu 828 um 89 896 i think uh and the motu traveler series that have all of the dsp and stuff built into it is because when the Firewire, the Fado project asked, uh, Motu goes, like, hey, can you, uh, like, you know, let's just, let's take a look mm -hmm. and see how we control this. Like, Get away from us, you smelly Linux nerds, which is almost word for word what they were told. So they reverse engineered their entire product stack. Yeah. So to this day in 2023, you get one of these Moto devices, and Moto's like, well, sorry, uh, Windows 11 looks like you're going to have to buy a new Moto device because we're just not going to support that. I'm like, mm, okay, it still works under Linux. That's cool. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So that is the longevity of this. Cause at some point, Go XLR, TC Alien, they're not going to support these. And there's going to be a version of Windows that's not going to support these down the road. You know, it's hard to think like 20 years down the road sometimes, but it's going to happen with this. You're still going to be able to use it on whatever operating system you got floating around, you know. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. That's why I actually did. they're ready to go now. If they want to make a flat pack or a snap of of the Don't. drivers, yeah, because <laughs> they have their they have their screenshot and they can make a thumbnail of it. 
<laughs> Hopefully these are very wise developers that are not lazy <laughs> and understand the restrictions and limitations of snaps and flatbacks. And they're yeah. like, hey, containerization for a desktop application that controls hard? That would be dumb. <laughs> which I'll go, correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Audio drivers as well. <laughs> You're not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're just never going to convince me about containerization on for desktop for end users. That it's not for end users. That's one of the big problems. Yeah. All right. Jill's going to tell you about a dot matrix truck. But before we do that, I've been doing a little bit of work on the website. I fixed up a couple of things. I kind of went back to a monolithic because I got tired of trying to get with uh, some of our menuing systems. So you'll notice if we go to linuxgamecast.com, if you go to podcast now, we just get everything on one page. This is right there. So we got this show, Very and nice. we got this show. Easy to index. And guess what? Shameless plug segment. Ah, I tricked you. You were watching the other thing. Our support <laughs> page is kind of like yeah. it used to be. I've just organized everything so you didn't have to fight the menu on mobile, which guess what? I might have been oh. fighting the menu on mobile the other day, and I'm like, I'm done fighting with you. Oh, So we got awesome, our little then. blurb. We got it <laughs> set up for recurring. And I also remember that we had Libra Pay. By the way, we have Libra Pay. Uh, if you want to use that as an option, Patreon. Of course, bunch of rewards on there. Go check that out. PayPal one time. We got one time donations recurring. We got all of our Amazon wish lists, Jill's, Pedro's, Jordan's. We got one for the studio. And, you know, with a warning that we will absolutely read the little note that you send us. Yes. Amazon storefront. So if you're looking for an item, I, I see somebody forgot to take his test link out. Hope. <laughs> Hope I couldn't. Uh, last night I was playing around with this, uh, with a. Oh. <laughs> And I couldn't get it to, uh, it was doing like a weird highlighting thing because uh, WordPress Gutenberg is made out of uh, pure Ew. evil and yes. speaking of things that are not user-friendly. I got to remove that. So feel free to click on that. That's just going to take you to our merch store. But if you don't know about the itemized list, um, I'm like, I always say, buy this stuff anywhere. If you're just curious about what's going on, like with equipment, there's those uh, lights that we just mm -hmm. bought, drives. And I use this all the time because I was like, hey, you know what? I need a... Another drive. Oh man, here's a okay. Here's a deal for everybody. These silicon power drives. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I almost bought mm -hmm. one of these the other day because guess what? You can get a two terabyte silicon power drive for Joe. Oh god, under twenty bucks. <laughs> Sixteen dollars and ninety seven cents. Nope. <laughs> no. That's oh, that's a twenty two hundred fifty six gig one. <laughs> two terabyte. Okay. So okay. how much could you get? You know what? Eight of those uh, for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, We're playing a guessing game. Feel free to go through it. $150. <laughs> $150. Let's see. How much survey says? 65 bucks. Ah, pretty good. For a mm -hmm. two terabyte drive. That is good. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, that is a very good price. I'm used to buying Samsung or, you know, name brand ones. I have Samsung two terabyte drives, <laughs> yeah. uh, one terabyte drives, 500, 256, you name it. I'm, but yeah. I run these guys, these silicon power drives. I just bought them because they were like 14 bucks, right? Yeah, they're cheap. And yeah. I put them in all these machines. I'm just running them. I haven't had a problem. No, I'm not hammering on them. Let's be clear about that. But I've not had any performances. I just wanted to, there's your uh, like free plug. What like go buy them on Newegg. I'm not telling you to go buy them on through our store or anything. Yeah. Unless you want to, that'd be awesome. Back to plugging our things. <laughs> you can click our hoop button or you can go to our merch store. If you want to put some Linux game cast all over your face, chest and neck, we got stickers and all that. And of course, humble affiliate. And uh, as always, if you are a Twitch sub or a patron, link your Discord. If you're on Discord and you do the Discord thing, we also get IRC, by the way. And that's always live. And it's bridged together, but we hang out in our Discord. If you want to come play Trackmania and all the other things, it's there. We appreciate your support. And all way, we release everything for free. Oh, yay. There yay. we go. Shameless self-promotion. We appreciate Aww. each and every one of you. Making this happen. We have to thank Mir in chat because he resubbed on Twitch for 44 months. He was one of our first subscribers when we went to Twitch. Thank you, Mir. <laughs> yeah, Mir resubbed last night on um, yes. Trackmania because Track he, did, he didn't want anybody to see it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we don't have any notice because we're racing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I noticed it today. So there we go. Let's talk about the Matrix. 
Oh, that's cool. That's a uh, a matrix cake. It's a black cake with uh, the matrix code on the Do you side think of that's it. That's a cake you're eating. And it says there is no cake. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a pie. I don't know. <laughs> so, anyways, you have seen planes writing giant messages in the sky how about instead of sky riding road riding <laughs> not road rage riding but just road riding ah vandalism <laughs> well a developer named Ryder damon has somehow managed to create a giant dot matrix printer on land using his truck and a raspberry pi the printing process is so cool it works by dropping splotches of water onto the road while the truck is driven the water is dropped carefully to shape letters and form custom messages. And Ryder uses a web interface in the cab of the truck, which controls a series of hoses and valves. And solenoids are used to release the water when directed by the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is responsible for running everything. The web interface, accepting user input for new messages, and sending the command to trigger the water-based printing system. You know, to me, this is just such an awesome and unique project for sending fun messages to friends and families and for special events. And I was thinking maybe Ryder could do a more permanent print using paint instead of water on a road or long driveway as an art project. But it's a little harder to get permission to do that. <laughs> I know, but that would be that would be interesting. And but nonetheless, this project, you know, a Raspberry Pi Trek dot matrix water printer is a first of its kind, and Ryder could make money from it, you know, just, just like uh, people do sky riding in planes, <laughs> making money uh, doing messages in the sky. <laughs> or maybe he just lives next to thirsty roads. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I think this is kind of this was just so cool how unique and it does look very dot matrix because they're big dots of splotches of water on the, the ground. world <laughs> is a vampire all right look at that <laughs> I'll have uh, links to his to the github project because uh, while Jill was talking to that I had to go and jump to like 11 the hoops so hey man maybe you're watching this later uh, make if you're gonna put a link to your <laughs> advice from old man vin to your mm -hmm. github do it in the video description not on your youtube about section mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is what i'm doing right now i'm like there it is i just put yeah. it in the show notes so that'll be go. on linuxgamecast.com this reminds me of a very funny story from the late 90s early 2000s is uh speaking of ibm a whimsical ibm because ibm was one of the early adopters of linux you know ibm used yeah, to have absolutely. linux commercials yes they with, sure did they were the best they weren't the best, but they had cool actors in them, and they were they were against they were the white commercials background. On television, it didn't matter. Yeah, there were they were Linux just cool. commercials on television. You're like the first what? ones. Yeah, <laughs> and IBM had a little bit of a campaign. I forget which city it was in, but they did a, you know, they did like the little chalk penguins, little blue chalk IBM. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And um, they put them throughout the city, and you're like, oh, everybody's really cool, but the. Uh, you know, and it's it's not fun because it rains and chalk just disappears, you know. But yeah. it's like a really cool Linux thing. The contractor that they used decided to use paint. So, okay, so he got in trouble. Well, wait a minute. Paint, paint. The, yeah. It tends to remain paint even after it Yeah, rains. it remains paint. Yeah, so it was, it was permanent. Um, I know they used to also do the uh, piece... Uh, love and Linux signs on buildings as well uh, yeah, when they were doing yeah the IBM uh, commercials those were so cool I remember seeing them here in LA on a billboard I was so happy wow you know this was in the 90s <laughs> late 90s early 2000s <laughs> wow. so cool Things. but you, making it paint is is probably not a good idea yeah they got in a little bit of trouble over that yeah it's interesting go, go look at it i think i got the broad strokes of that correct i'm internet being the internet okay. feel free to leave a comment in the video description it's like well actually then i'm like i'm sure there's some well actually it's left wiggle room in there so absolutely feel free yeah. to save me a google search <laughs> thank you i'll be happy to read it if you got any comments questions thoughts hints allegations or things better left unsaid do that drop a link or a comment don't drop a link on the youtube video because it just like gets thrown into spam and i read that like every three months i'm like help for review i'm like oh yes that's the suction and i gotta go through that we gotta get mm -hmm. out of here everyone 
It's great. Aww. Come check us out live. Roll the music and roll last yes. week's credits because I had to fight a MIDI control surface. Uh -huh. <laughs> issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor Vin. <laughs> it's okay. We have lots of credits. We might. I don't know. Did the music oh. start? Not yet. Not yet. And speaking then of real quickly about the Go XLR. Um, that's really great for teaching, uh, for having Linus from Linus Tech Tips use it <laughs> correctly. No, because it's have... on GitHub. Did you see what he did to a GitHub? He tried to save I it know. as a web page. But we're getting closer for him to be able to use it. And I'm wearing a Linus Tech Tip shirt. I just oh, that's realized where that. you're going with that. You're like, hey, I didn't mention that I had on a Linus Tech Tip shirt. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I, for, I forgot to say it during the segment. But thank you to all our wonderful patrons. Sorry, everybody. To our came death before. notes and <laughs> chairlings, to our executive producers and advisors. Work out a like Arthur. Remember, it's episode 381. So. We got to run everybody. Thanks for showing up. We're going to hang out in the after show for a little bit. And remember, Jill has a lightest tech tip shirt. Do you want to show it off? I wouldn't have no idea. <laughs> what? L LTT. It says LTT. And it has all the components. I have a uh, computer Linus, components. <laughs> Linus tips poster. Yeah. So. I actually have a wardrobe of Linus Tech Tips. I've bought bought the sweats, and they're really cool because they have all the pockets in them. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone.